busy at the start as well today, isn't it? We've got more people down there than we've had previously in the I week. People are enjoying this. Off we go then. This is the Princess Royal Challenge Cup. Chris Kovac against Dimchenko. Dimchenko to the right of your picture, although initially just going a little bit too far left. It's so difficult, this steering, when yeah. you're on your own. And it's such a long race as well, isn't it? When you're on, on your own in a boat. It's, it is a long way. And even sitting at the start line, you're sitting there by yourself. You've got a lot of people around you, but it's, it's such a different environment than when you're out there with seven other rowers, four other rowers. It's, uh, it's definitely different. So um, I'm sure they will come up with their own game plan. But when it's a one-on-one -on -one situation, there's a lot more tactics and a lot more can happen when the race is significantly longer than it is compared to the big boats. Just tell us a little bit about conditions, because there is a stiff breeze blowing now, isn't it? And it looks to me a bit like a crosswind, but you can uh, confirm that. And what impact will that have on the boats if, if indeed that is the case? It's, it's difficult. It does make it more challenging. I think, personally, I would know you're settling in for a long race. Um, it comes into play that you're like, OK, things can change in the middle. Um, if it's going to be a longer race and people go out too hard, there is the chance that people could fade. And especially when you get into the single skulls, you can change speed pretty quickly. So if, if things go wrong, you hit the wall, you can um, you can suffer. So this is it's always an interesting dynamic when when you've got to think about those things. And especially in sculling boats, if it's a bit of a side wind, one half of your body is doing a lot more work than the other half of your body, which is very tiring, very fatiguing, and, and can wear you down as the race goes on. So um, they'll be wanting to make sure they don't get too far off track to, to have to do like quite a quite an aggressive move back, because that really, really does take it out of you. And the other thing is if the conditions are changing each day, and both of these have been on the water on Thursday and Friday, now Saturday, I think I'm right in saying we've had three different wind directions in those three days. So we had a, a headwind on uh, yesterday and a, a tailwind on the Thursday where people were putting in record performances even though it was early in the week and now we've got more of a crosswind it that must take a bit of getting used to as well the fact that it's a, a shifting wind each day yes and like this is this is quite a good shot where you can actually see how gusty it is and gusts personally are potentially the hardest thing to row through because you might think yes I'm on a good line I'm, I'm tracking well and then you get a gust and you're like well now I'm off course and now I have to um, Recorrect, but it's not really something you can predict. Whereas if it's just a stiff headwind yeah, that you know, yeah, yes. then you're just like, oh, I'm just gonna have to kind of, you know, grind into this, bite into this. Um, but I know what I'm getting. But you can see the sort of quieter patches on the water where they'll be like, oh, I'm I'm not getting blown around. Then all of a sudden it's like, oh, one stroke later, and then I'm half a boat length closer to the middle. A bit more um, technically demanding. It takes real skill of your technique comes into play it really is the inconsistency of the wind but there's a, a good lead here for Dimchenko to the left of your picture there gonna get some ducks yes yeah, so we've got a bit of geese action on the way the Australian car up Chris Kowak may not be pleased to see that now, and Cara sounds like she's come over for quite a exciting Henley tour. She was out at Henley Women's the other weekend and, and won that. So um, I think that would have been a good experience on this course as well, having that warm up and, and getting used to the lay of the land. Obviously, slightly different distances. The Henley Women's course is a bit shorter. Um, but really coming over here and have experiencing both is going to give us some pretty valuable experience. The geese, they look quite impressed. No, they didn't really want to get off the course, they really wanted a they front, got, front row seat. They've got the box seat, <laughs> haven't they? Good close up. And here you can see Dimchenko dominating the race. Mentally, that must be such a good feeling, having that decent lead early in the race. There's still a long way to go. Anything could happen easily, but nonetheless, sitting at the front like that. It definitely is, and I think it's it's a really interesting how your mindset makes you feel so much more energetic, or it makes you feel tired if you are constantly feeling like you're you're trying to claw back, claw, claw back. It's it's tiring. But Kara doesn't look like she's letting her get away, and it might be the angle, or or she might be slowly sort of eating that in. But it's definitely not a comfortable enough lead to relax yet, uh, especially in the singles. Let's have a look how Kara's eaten back into that, and that definitely is tightened up 
you can see as they go past the camera, you'll get a really good view here. This is definitely race on, where a couple of minutes ago, Dimchenko had a really good lead. And as a rower, there is actually nothing more, I guess, energising, I would say, than slowly passing another crew. It's, we were talking about mindset just before, but when you're like, I'm, I'm walking through someone else, you suddenly can all of, um, get like a second wind and, and you sort of feel like you get fresh legs. So um, it'll be an important stage of the race here, whether someone wants to make a dominant move to either shut down Kara's move or um, Kara might start to be like, now nah, it's now or never if I'm going to get to the start. Well, the last two or three minutes, Kara, the Australian's boat has been moving quicker, but Dimchenko now has responded and starts to move away again just toying with the Australian. Here's Dimchenko. It's quite a good race to show how much the singles can move in speed. I think it's, you're out there by yourself so you can do a push and it can make a difference. Um, and you can see that the sculler in front is, is able to sort of shut down a move a bit quicker than maybe in a big boat where you've got to just sort of get, get everyone on the same page and you don't have this quicker change of speed. You also get a really good idea of the uh, how easy it would be to take a tumble if you weren't really experienced. And that, that boat is so narrow, it's so finely balanced, and you've got to take your hat off to the skill level. I know for you, Grace, it's what you did every day, but well, not quite this, was it? But uh, uh, you were yeah. always in a pair or a slightly bigger boat. But nonetheless, that uh, balance required on, on wind windy conditions with a bit of a current that really is some skill oh single scholars i i hands down take my hat off to them oh. i uh, oh, what yeah. about the fairground <laughs> though you, that, you've got to take your hat off when it goes up <laughs> yeah. there as well Dude, that's something that i wouldn't do <laughs> or, or the single to be fair it's such a such a technical boat it's so it's so um reactive and and i never spent a lot of time in it so um I, I, it still kind of terrifies me, the idea of being out there racing a single, so I'm very impressed by people that can spend the time in it, and it's, it's, a, it's a special boat class, it's definitely like no other. Would you be more terrified being in a single at Henley on semi-finals day or up that fairground ride? It would be close. I'm going to have to say the single at Henley. I think the idea of I, I, I'm not skillful enough at sculling to stay on stay on my lane, so I believe I would be all over all over the course. Um, well, Divchenko's responded well here. Breskovac put in a burst mid-race. Just worried. Timchenko for a moment, but she's responded, definitely responded, and has kept things under control. Princess Royal Challenge Cup's what you're watching. Single scholars on the water. Dimchenko of Azerbaijan, formerly of Ukraine, on the buck station to the left of your picture there, leading the race. There she is. She's done a really good job at sort of Taking it over and making it look light, and I'm not sure how light it would feel because it, it's a lot of work going in through the blades. But she seems to be quite on top of the water. Her boat's moving. It's um, she's picking it up before it sort of drops down and and stopping every stroke. So I think that's sort of paying off for her in that sort of third quarter, where she's had to hold through the moves. Her week continues. She beat Jen Titterington on Thursday. She beat Canadian yesterday on the Buck Station. And on the Buck Station again. So three days in a row on the Buck Station. Three victories in a row. And, and Dimchenko from Azerbaijan with a few more strokes in front of Stewart's enclosure to book her place in the Princess Royal Challenge Cup final tomorrow. Coming up tomorrow. She can drop the rate down. That is a long race in these conditions on your own in a single skull, but she's over the finish line now. Dimchenko of Azerbaijan goes through, and it's the end of Kara Briskovac's week here at Henley.